What's up, dogs and all guests? Welcome back. Week four of the NFL pick up against the spread and straight up with your boys, Hark Dog 25 and Fitz Canada. How you doing, Fitz? Welcome back. Uh, doing good. Looking to beat the coin this week because beating you seems to be not too hard, but now I have a new challenger in the coin. Yeah, the Euro this time. I, I lost the quarter. I think I spent it in the vending machine, so <laughs> he's gone for good. Hopefully he's giving somebody else some luck. Um, okay, so let's just go over real quick how I did last week. We'll do it real quick. I was 6-10 and 10 win loss, 5-11 and 11 versus the spread. 21-27 win loss overall, which is just absolutely terrible to be below 500. And 13-35 and 35 versus the spread. If I just went counter to what I think, I'd be unbelievable right now. But uh, I'm definitely at the bottom of my league by about 4 or 5 picks, so not good. <laughs> Uh, Fit six and ten last week, um, both sides against the spread and straight up twenty four and twenty four, straight up overall seventeen and thirty one. So you're beating me by four now. Um, yeah, it's still unimpressive. No, yeah, it's it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. So let's jump into them right away. All right, we got the Thursday night game, which is happening right now. Um, Cincinnati at home, fair by seven points against the Miami Dolphins. Um, I saw that Landry and Parker might not play, so this is kind of a... I, I mean, I had Cincinnati beforehand, but I think Cincinnati is just pining for a win. They're at home. Uh, they got an easy team, finally. They've been playing a bunch of tough defenses. I mean, Miami's front line is is tough, like you said. And uh, I just think Dalton, A.J. Green, uh, Jeremy Hill finally broke through last week. So, And I'm just picking Cincinnati just, just because I can. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not overly confident about this game because I think Miami has a pretty good defensive line and Andy has been sacked a lot this season, so it could be the same story tonight. Um, so I'm not too confident, and if they lose this game, it is time to panic, but until that time comes, uh, I'm going to keep picking them and uh, hope for the best. I, I do think that they should win this game. Uh, seven point spread is what I'm not sure about, but I will pick them to win and cover. All right, Cincinnati, it is for Fitz. Let's do the coin. All right, so this euro, the 10 cent will be the head, and then this Brandenburg Gate on the back, that'll be the away team. So, all right, so coin is going Cincy as well. Well done, coin. All right, let's move on to the right. Sunday games. Um, Jacksonville at home in London against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, if this was in Jacksonville, I was going to pick Jacksonville, but since they're away, um, I just think the better the better team all around is Indianapolis. They actually got a decent win last week against a very depleted uh, Charger team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so it's going to be nice to wake up and uh, check out this game at like 9, 10 in the morning or whatever it starts. Uh, but I got Indianapolis winning and covering the two and a half points. Uh, I just think Jacksonville's not that good. I thought they'd be better this year. Their defense hasn't done much. So, Indy for me. Yeah, I picked Jacksonville to make the playoffs in that division at the start of the, start of the year, our preseason picks. And I got to stick with that. If they lose this game, they're almost done. I don't want to say they're done because that division is so bad right now, especially now that you've got J.J. Watt out for the Texans. Yeah. Um and the Titans are the Titans, but and, and the Colts, in spite of Andrew Luck, they they can't really beat anybody good. So I'm going to go Jacksonville this game. It is their quote unquote home game in London, <laughs> and I still feel like overall I do think they're the better team. I do think that they're better than Indy. I truly believe that they haven't played like it though. So I'm going to give them one more chance. They lose this game and go 0 4. I'm probably going to have to stop picking them, but I'm going to give them one more chance. Jags to win and cover. All right, coin. Coins going Jags as well. Well done, coin. Well, it's the Euro coin. Of course, of course, it's gonna go for the home team. I mean, that makes sense. It does make sense. Well, I mean, England's not part of the European Union anymore, so just saying. Um, not true. <laughs> all right, let's go to the Sunday games. Houston favored by six and a half points at home against Tennessee. Now, Demarco Murray's been having a great season. Mariota's been having a, a terrible season. I think Houston at home, even without Watt. Um, defense is going to do enough uh, force a few turnovers from Mariota um, they just don't have anybody there really outside of Marcus Mariota maybe TJ Sharp but I mean he's a rookie 
And I think Osweiler and Hopkins and Fuller and Miller get the offense going this week. I think they're going to win and cover at home. So I got Houston this week. Well, we already got two out of three games different. And I got to say right now, I think we're going to have a lot more than that because I've got some bold picks this week. And this is one of them. I'm taking the Titans to win and cover against the Texans. Wow. Very wow. unimpressed. Very underwhelmed. With the Texans. I was underwhelmed coming into the season. I felt that they were overrated. A lot of people were crowning them as the division champs, playoff contenders, and all that. True. I, I didn't see it. And I think they showed their true colors against uh, New England. Granted, it's New England. But, oh, hey, you got a little, little action going on there. Oh, we're on a really busy street, so it happens every night. Nothing new. <laughs> but it won't happen well, uh, in two days. We'll be moving. Right. I'm moving in two days, so. A new place. Nice. Yep. A new place. All right. Well, uh. Yeah, very underwhelmed with the Texans, and I think the, the Titans have shown some fight in their 1-2 and two record. So I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Titans put it together, and the Texans are in disarray after losing J.J. Watt, and Osweiler can't bounce back after his uh, goose egg against New England. So Titans win the cover. All right, coin. Coin is with you. You and the coin are one in the same. <laughs> one could say we are twin sides oh yeah you're a you're a two-sided coin that's for sure all right next game washington at home favored by nine and a half points against the cleveland browns now cleveland showed something on offense last week even with uh cody kessler coming in um but having uh throw Pryor, who was a starter in oakland before he uh became an idiot and they pretty much benched him and then shipped him out um, Washington showed a little something against the Giants, but the Giants, I never thought they were that good. I picked Washington uh, to win and cover last week, and they did. Um, I'm going to pick Washington to win, but I think only by a touchdown. Cleveland uh, has, a, has a decent defense and a def decent defensive backfield. Um, so they're going to keep Cousins, who's been throwing some picks this year on edge. And just because, uh, I feel like they got, I feel like Cleveland uh, is going to pull... Uh, Pull the upset of the spread and cover. So, that's who I got this week? Last week I did the same thing. I took Miami to win, which they did, and I took Cleveland to cover, which they did. And now you're yep. uh, now you're pulling that one, uh, taking saying Cleveland's going to lose but cover. Um, I'm going to go the other way this week. I'm going to take Washington to win and cover. Wow. Right against them last week, that proved to be a mistake. I do like the Washington team. Uh, I think they're going to really lay it to Cleveland this week. I think last week is uh, giving the Cleveland fans hope. And we know what happens when the Browns fans get hope. Is the Browns <laughs> rush that hope in <laughs> dramatic fashion. I'm looking for a... could be as much as like a 18-20 point victory for Washington. Wow. Wow, that's bold. All An right. absolute drubbing. Wow. All right. Coin? Well, we already knew the answer to that one. Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and the coin. All right. So I'm, I'm the contrarian guy here tonight. Uh, all right, next game. New York Jets at home against Seattle. Seattle fared by one and a half points on the road. Now, they did look a lot better against San Francisco last week. I did pick San Francisco to cover, and San Francisco didn't even show up. Uh, but that was in CenturyLink Field. Um, the Jets are at home. The Jets are the more healthy team. Russell Wilson's hobbled. He's got that sprained right knee. Um... Chris and Michael looked good last week, but I mean, I, I feel like that front four of the Jets is going to keep it close. So I'm picking the upset here. I'm picking the Jets to win and cover at home. I think they need this game more than Seattle does, uh, and it's going to show. And Fitzpatrick might throw less than six interceptions this game. So um, I will probably bet the house on that. <laughs> I'm just going to go with the Jets this week, just because. Betting on Ryan six Patrick, eh? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a six pack abs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, six picks that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually gonna do the same thing. I had I had the Jets winning and covering two this week. Uh, okay. I think Seattle with Russell Wilson uh, being uh, gimpy like he is. I don't think I think without Wilson, uh, Wilson at his best, anyways. I think they're no better than an average team overall. Seattle, they uh, have looked very weak. In a lot of contests, not just this year, but dating back to last year, they've looked weak. They play down to their opponent, and then you have Russell Wilson there to bail them out at the end of the game a lot of the time. 
Uh, I, I don't think they can keep that up. And I think this is a week where the Jets are going to come back after an embarrassing loss last week at home. I think they're going to come up big and beat the Seahawks. All right. Got you down. Jets, coin. Contrarian. They're going Seattle. That away, coin. Mixing it up okay. now, finally. Mixing it up. In his own man. Yeah, he is. Uh, next game, New England at home fair by four and a half points against the Rex Ryan led Buffalo Bills. Now Buffalo did look good last week against Arizona. Uh, they got Palmer out of his comfort zone and Palmer out of his comfort zone. There was a lot of picks. Um, the defense didn't do too much to stop Buffalo's offense. LaShawn McCoy had a big day, but I mean, this is in New England. Uh, it doesn't matter really who's QB in the team. Uh, Belichick is going to coach that team up. Uh, and I think New England's going to win and cover this one. I'm I'm kind of thinking as well that Buffalo might backdoor cover. Um, but I think Belichick is just going to be too good. Uh, the team is too good. The team is too focused. I, I got New England in this one. So I said last week when they were playing the Texans, and there was all that hype about, about Houston and all oh, their they're plan, their rookie, Brissett, nobody knows who he is. They, they can't win, surely. I took New England. I said, look, I can't bet against Belichick. I, I took Arizona the first week. And he shut me up with that. Yeah, I can't do it, but I'm doing it this week. I'm going to take Buffalo to win the cover. I just... Wow. All right. Last week against Arizona, I think the team rallied. They were they were playing for Rex's job. They lose that game. There will be a real, very real chance that he gets fired, if not right after that game, soon after. I think that team is on such an emotional high right now. It's always uh, a fight when it's Rex Ryan against Bill Belichick. I think the team knows that. I think they're going to come out flying. Look for the defense to do much of the same that they did against Arizona. Um, New England has been running the ball the most in the league with uh, without Brady. They've been running the ball. I think we're going to see some fumbles from New England. I Ooh. think they're going to be forced into some throwing positions. I think we're going to see some picks. I think Buffalo is going to win this game. Over. All right, let's see what the coin thinks. I'm sure he's gonna go Buffalo, and he is. <laughs> it's gonna be a passionate game, though. One way or the other. There's always, there's all, it's always a dogfight uh, between. Uh, Say what you want about Rex, Rex and Ryan. New England. He's a passionate guy. Yeah, he is. Um, all right, next game: Atlanta at home, coming off their big win against the Saints, but Carolina's favored by three and a half points. Um, I just think three and a half points is a lot. I think Carolina is going to win, but I think they're only going to win by a field goal. It's going to be a lot closer than people think. It seems like Matt Ryan now has the tools around him. Um, he's got Sanu. I mean, Julio Jones caught like two catches in that game for 16 yards. Um, Tevin Coleman came out of the gates, had three touchdowns. I'm glad I picked him up in a couple of leagues. Um, Devontae Freeman had a big game, averaging 11 yards a carry. Um, albeit it's against the Saints. Um, but that's going to give them uh, some motivation because that was in uh, the Superdome. So I got Atlanta covering Carolina winning this week. Uh, I've actually... Uh, oh. Sorry, one sec. <laughs> okay, back. Uh, sorry, what, what, what game were you on? Uh, Carolina, oh, Atlanta. Balls. Yeah, I'm yeah. going Falcons to win and cover. All right, Falcons all right. to win and cover. This offense with the the twin headed backfield, they've got Coleman and Freeman playing out of their minds. Matt Ryan is the number one, at least fantasy quarterback so far this year. They've got the depth that receiving now. I think until this offense is shut down, I don't know how you can bet against it. Granted, the Saints defense is like historically bad. Um, Carolina's had issues so far this year. And I think they're vulnerable. And when they went 15 to one last year, who was the one team that beat them? Matt Ryan. Ah, ah very true. I think very true. Those those division games, those games in that division are always hard to call. So I just I just see Atlanta taking uh taking that division by the throat, the three to one lead, and Carolina going to one and three, and there will be panic there. All right, all right, very cool coin. Coins going to Carolina. On your side for once. No, I, I picked Atlanta to cover, so I'm on your oh, side. Oh, to cover, that's right, yep. okay. 
All right, next game, Baltimore favored by three and a half points at home against the visiting Oakland Raiders. Now, three and a half points, uh, I think, is too much for a Baltimore team that's pretty much beat nobody this year. I mean, they beat Buffalo, then I think what they played Cleveland, and then they played Jacksonville. I mean, Oakland's played uh, in some shootouts, and they got a good offense. Um, so I got Oakland uh, winning and covering this game. I just don't see how Baltimore got three and a half points. I think it's just uh, based on their record and then playing at home. Uh, Oakland's a good Please. team. And out. They will definitely uh, win and cover this game. That offense is just too good. And they're going to hold Flacco, who hasn't done much this year, um, to a few points. So Oakland for me. Yeah, the Ravens, they haven't beat anybody. And, and they've done it in about as unimpressive fashion as you can, as you can get. They have barely beat nobody is what they've done. Meanwhile, the Raiders, they're 2-1. and one. The one game that they did lose was uh, a gutsy... Uh, one of the games they won, that gutsy call for the two points at the end. You gotta yeah. respect that. And that offense can throw the ball. They've got an okay running game with Latavius Murray. Um, I just like them a lot better than the Ravens in spite of what their records say. I think the Ravens defense is okay though. I would give them give them credit for that. But again, they struggled against teams that are bad this year. And the, the Raiders have just looked way better overall. I gotta take the Raiders to win the cover. Okay. Got you down, Oakland. <clears throat> and the coin is going Baltimore. Interesting. Interesting choice coin. <laughs> But it's even four four home four away for the coin so makes sense all right next game chicago at home uh against the visiting detroit lions detroit favored by three i'm not gonna spend too much time on this one chicago is decimated with injury uh langford's out obviously cutler's out brian hoyer is in that defensive backfield stinks that defensive line sucks uh detroit their offense looks really good they came they're pretty strong against the packers in the second half of the uh, game last week um you know, Riddick out of the backfield. He catches a lot of passes. Uh, that defensive line's better. I, I just, Detroit, I can't spend too much time on this game. Chicago's a dumpster fire. Yeah, this one's pretty easy. Uh, after, after the Philly, the Monday night game, I said, well, I'm done picking Chicago for the rest of the year. <laughs> and to be fair, it, it turns out the Eagles are actually pretty good when I thought they were terrible at the time. But it doesn't change the fact that Chicago's terrible. I, I can't pick them. At least, at least not till the, till they prove me wrong. So, uh, definitely got to go with Detroit here, win and cover. Simple All right. as that. Coin, coins going Chicago. Wow, coin. Old. That's why he's the coin. He he plays by no rules except the rule of odds. The loose cannon. Yeah. All right. Next game, Tampa Bay at home, favored by. Oh, now they're not favored. Underdogs by three points. I'm sorry. To the visiting Denver Broncos now. If St. Louis can dominate Tampa Bay at home, 37-32, uh, Denver going in there, I think, is going to dominate as well. I mean, Simeon looked good against Cincinnati last week. They run the ball so well that defensive fronts can be all over Winston. Um, I think it's going to be a big fantasy day for Denver because Winston does like to throw the ball to the other team. Um, not going to spend too much time on this one. Uh, I think Denver is going to win and cover uh, fairly easily with that defense. Um, it's going to be like uh, the sh Tampa Bay going to Arizona a couple weeks ago and then just getting stomped uh, because of that defense. So, Denver for me. I disagree. Last week, you're right that the Rams, they, they had a huge lead over Tampa, if I remember correctly. Jameis Winston got back of that game and almost completed the comeback. There was a huge delay for weather at the end of the game when it reached the two-minute warning. They yep. had to take a, a long break. I think that killed a lot of the momentum that they had. And they came up here short, but watching the Broncos against Cincinnati, I was very unimpressed. Uh, they won basically off of two long touchdown passes that Simeon had. Uh, two plays, and that pretty much won them the game. Cincinnati dropped not one, but two very easy interceptions. Denver gets an interception of their own. Basically, just all these little things that could have gone wrong for since he went wrong. I'm not ready to admit that Denver's a better team than Cincinnati, so long as they beat the Dolphins tonight. <laughs> yeah. If they lose to the Dolphins, then I'll, I'll admit Denver's better. But well, they're losing I, right now. They're losing right I now. I don't think I don't think it was that impressive a win. So, uh, 
I still like the Bucks this year. I still All think right. they've got they've got a shot. I'm taking the winning cover. You're sticking to your guns. Sean That's fine. Well. Yeah. All right. So let's see what the coin says. The coin is with me this time. Going Denver. All right. Let's go on to the next game. Arizona at home fair by nine points against those LA Rams coming off a big win. Now Jeff Fisher, I don't think has been two and one in his life coaching the Rams. Um, I think <laughs> uh, Casey Keeman just had a charmed game. Arizona uh, coming off a loss on the East Coast. They're back home. I think they're just going to throttle the Rams. I think Palmer's going to have a big day. I think Gurley might do well, um, but he's going to be the only thing. I mean, I don't know how they scored 37 points against uh, Tampa Bay. It's just mind-boggling uh, with that team with no offense um, other than Austin and Gurley. And it's going to show in this game, Arizona is going to cover the nine points and win this game. I think it's going to be a big day for Palmer and Johnson. Yeah, I've got, I've got the same deal. I've got Arizona winning cover right. But uh, not overly confident because St. Louis has been surprising a lot of people this year so far. So I can't say I'd be surprised again if, you know, let's say Arizona won by three points. I'd be like, okay, that's fair. But yeah. I, I am going to take Arizona because, like you said, after their, their loss the first week, what did they do the second week? They came out and just absolutely slaughtered somebody. I forget who. Tampa Bay. They have, yeah, yeah, they had a huge set. Yeah, they destroyed them. Uh, embarrassing, embarrassing loss last week to Buffalo. I expect them to do much of the same and come out and just bottle the Rams, like you said. Very cool. Coin. Going with the Rams. Boy, the coin is contrarian now. And since he just scored a touchdown, so now they're up 10 7. AJ Green. AJ Green. Go. All right, next game New Orleans, four point underdogs on the road at San Diego. Now, San Diego just lost Manti Teo. Uh, they lost Keenan Allen. They lost Woodhead. Antonio Gates may not play. I mean, Phil Riv uh, is good and keeps him in games, but. God, there's only so much he can do. I mean, I just I just feel bad for him with all the injuries he's had to deal with the last couple of years. I think New Orleans uh, is going to cover this game. San Diego might win. I think it's a coin flip on who will win. Um, and we'll see what the coin says. But I got New Orleans covering the spread at least. Um, I feel like San Diego might win by a field goal. But I think New Orleans just has a better offense. Um, and they'll do just enough on defense. To where they'll cover the spread. This one I'm really not sure about, I'll be honest with you. This yeah. is a complete point flip to begin. That's exactly what we're going to do. But before we do that, um, I think this is Breeze's first time playing in San Diego uh, since leaving the Chargers. That's been a long time. Wow, that was 2005, so, yeah. So this game means something to him. Um, now, is that, does that mean that come out? really uh give it to them i don't know i want to believe i like both breeze and rivers god i don't know whatever i'll, I'll just take new orleans cover <laughs> I, I like this really i could see it going either way both teams yeah. are just, they're bad this year but they have high scoring offenses you know what the game is like, yeah like, there's gonna be a lot of something to 30 something yeah yeah somehow rivers will put up 30 points with that lack of offensive talent yeah uh, i don't know how he does it but he does it every year i know coins go in new orleans as well all, all right. right next game san francisco at home underdogs by three points to the visiting dallas cowboys um dez is not going to play probably uh but i don't think that's going to matter i think dallas just has more talent i think dak is a way better qb than blaine gabbard is um carlos hyde is the only person on san francisco that i would trust um, to score points. Um, Vance McDonald's out. I mean, Torrey Smith catches like four balls a game. He doesn't do too much. So I got Dallas going into San Francisco, winning and covering this game. I mean, I just... San Francisco just has no talent on the offensive side uh, other than Hyde, and I don't think Hyde's going to keep him in that game. He's got to run for 200 yards and three touchdowns, in my opinion. So, give me Dallas. Another upset special for me this week. I'm going San Fran. Wow. I've got, cool. I've got the Titans winning. I've got the Bucks beating the Broncos. I've got San Fran beating Dallas now. I think you're way underestimating Blake Gabbard. I think that he has shown quite a bit of poise this year. I think that team as a whole has 
already outplayed their expectations. I know their record is not a great team by any means, but they're not they're not dumpster tier. I don't think they're dumpster tier at all. I think they're much closer to Dallas in the whole than people think. Okay. I think Des being out is gonna make a difference. I think uh, here's here's a bold prediction. I think Blaine Gabbert is gonna run with more than Dak Prescott and uh, maybe run in a touchdown. I think okay. he's just gonna wow. overall out, outplay Dak I think San Fran. That is a bold strat. Let's get you with the coin things here. The coin is going with you. Jeez. Blaine's a good runner. Like, a lot of people don't know that about his game. He can run. Yeah, he had to run for his life when he was in uh, Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll get anybody running. Yeah. All right, let's go next game. Sunday night football. Uh, Pittsburgh favored by six points over the visiting Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, six points is a ton. Um and the Chiefs just have not fared well going on the road. I mean, we saw what they did in Houston this year after throttling, throttling them in the playoffs last year. Pittsburgh's getting Le'Veon Bell back. I think that's going to open up the offense a lot more because he can catch the ball in the backfield a little bit better than Williams can. Uh, he's going to be fresh, um, and he's going to be angry after that suspension. So I'm going to go Pittsburgh. I'm just going to go with the home team here to win and cover. Uh, I do like Kansas City, possibly the cover, but I, I think... Uh, they're gonna open up, open it up, and get Antonio Brown. I mean, Ken's Roethlisberger is better than Fitzpatrick. Uh, Kansas City's not gonna get six uh, picks this week, in my opinion. They're not gonna get six picks, but they are gonna win the game of cover. Wow. Um, I didn't watch last week's game, the Steelers and Eagles game, but obviously that that was a huge surprise to me. I didn't know if Philly had it. I thought Pittsburgh was way better than that because I did watch Pittsburgh play Cincinnati in week two. Yep. And, you know, I got I got to respect them after that. They, they won that game. It. I think they are one of the best teams in the AFC. However, I think Kansas City is also one of the best teams in the AFC. I think they're starting to put it together. They had a really big week uh, defensively against Patrick. I'm sure, Fitzpatrick's not the best quarterback in the league, but they had a big week defensively. I think they're going to have another big week defensively. Um, probably a couple picks. Roethlisberger, they're going to be forced to throw. Um, I know Le'Veon Bell is back, but uh, like you said, he takes a lot of passes out of the backfield more than Williams does. I think there's going to be mistakes in Pittsburgh this week. Kansas City is going to uh, take advantage of that and win this game just barely. All right. Wow. Very nice. Let's see what the coin says here. Coin's going with you. You and the coin have been together on about 80% tonight, so interesting. Well, I mean, between the three of us, there's been a lot of different picks. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. All right, Monday Night Football. Those surprising Minnesota Vikings favored by four points against visiting Giants. Now, um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I've been picking against the Vikings all year and it's been costing me every week. Um, Minnesota at home, playing inspired ball, just beat the Packers, just beat Carolina. Um, just absolutely throttling people on defense cam newton i'm surprised walked off the field after getting sacked eight times last week throwing three picks definitely didn't look like an mvp at all um and minnesota just does enough on special teams and defense you know to win games they return a kick you know they pick up a fumble and posing territory and turn it into easy points um i just gotta go minnesota in this one i know giants have big receivers but they also have a weak offensive line. Eli, I don't think, is going to stay up. They don't have a running game. Rashad Jennings is hurt. So they got to rely on uh, Orleans Darkwa and um, oh, there was some other guy. It was some blast for the pass name uh, from New Orleans um, as their second running back. And I couldn't believe he still was in the league. Um, and it's going to make him one-dimensional. Minnesota thrives when a team is one-dimensional. So give me Minnesota to win and cover this week. Yeah, I don't know how you can pick against Minnesota. They, they've shut all of us up who doubted them so far. Beating Green Bay and, and Carolina like they did. He said they made Cam Newton look like a boy. And meanwhile, <laughs> on the other side of the ball, you've got uh, Odell Beckham throwing hissy fits on the sideline. Like That was so funny. <sighs> get, getting so attacked funny. by the, the poor kicking net. <laughs> well, uh, like, I mean, he, the net was attacked first. He just retaliated. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, as long as this doesn't come down to a chip shot field goal, I think Minnesota is going to win it. Uh, 
four points. Yeah, I think they can cover that. Um, New York, they're one of those bubble teams, really. They, they can play well, but uh, some weeks they just can't seem to put it together. And Odell Beckham, uh, he's such a diva. He's like the stereotypical diva receiver who's all about himself. And uh, when things aren't going well, he's going to do what he did last week. And Minnesota, their defense is clearly good enough that they can they can do that to an offense. They, they're gonna they're gonna have them throwing hissy fits for sure. Uh, I hope so. It's gonna be great to watch it again. Let's we'll see what the coin thinks. The coin's got to go heads, right? And it is unbelievable. The coin might do really well this week. I mean, it did really well oh, last week. Any of us can do really well this week. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We got a lot of different picks. I think. Uh, you know, as long as you forget about the first three weeks. Yeah, well, those are forgotten. Finally, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a little bit more balanced. You're a little bit more home heavy this week, and the coin is the coin, pretty much even. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, good luck, Fitz, and good luck to anybody out there that leaves the picks uh, below in the comments. Um, nobody's joined us yet, but hopefully, some people will, because um, it we're easy pickings now. I mean, we're just we could easy, we can be dominated. I mean, if someone just throws darts at a board, I think we can lose. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And look, I'm a disclaimer. I think this week is a complete crapshoot. There's only like three or four picks that I feel confident about. So uh, it's kind of the inverse. The last few weeks, I've been confident. I've been terrible. I think you know you feel the same way. So maybe this week's gonna be the opposite. Maybe we finally get bold, pick some things that. We're not so sure about maybe it's going to finally go our way who knows yeah i mean it wasn't my way in my fantasy leagues i was 0 and 5 last week um <laughs> as well so but i was i had a hot start i had a hot start i was 5 2 and 1 so it's not bad kind of e evening out so this week i think uh i'm gonna do good in the pick em. gonna do good in fantasy um gonna do good in the move everything's gonna be good it's gonna be all good <laughs> so yeah, but thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hopefully we do good. Take care.